Hello makers, welcome to 3D Maker Noob. I'm Joe and in today's episode of Anoob's 3D Printing Guide, we're going to get acquainted with Cura. So in the last episode I showed you guys how to set up a profile for your 3D printer. You probably noticed that in the setup or right at the end there were quite a few things on the sides which you can change and numbers and text and today I felt like it's time to um, get acquainted with Quora and show you guys exactly what all those, well, fields are meant to do. So what I'm going to do now is jump into PC and sort of give you a very short overview, a beginner's guide to Quora because there are advanced settings. However, we'll keep this on the recommended settings, which is the basic settings of 3D printing. And that should give you an idea of what kind of variables you can change on a model. So in order to give you a better idea of how this all works, uh, it's best to download a model that you would like to print. In my case, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go on Thingiverse. I will leave a link in the video description. This site hosts tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of 3D printable models. There are many other sites such as My Mini Factory or Pinshape. I will leave the links in the video descriptions for those as well. But for now, this will do because I simply require a very small, simple model to um, to test. So what I'm going to do is go into the search area here. I'm going to write Charmander, and I'm going to choose this low poly Charmander um, designed by Flowalistic. Once here, I simply click on download all files, and a zip folder will download. Open that up, and in the zip file, you will find a folder called files. Double click on it, and you have the STL file. This is the model. Now remember that we have to change it from STL to G code, and that is what Cura will do. So we're gonna grab it and simply drag it onto Cura, and it will be right there. Now, first off, you have the materials, and there are many types of different materials you can use. However, as a starter, I would highly, highly recommend that you start off with PLA because it's much more forgiving, it's very easy to print with and doesn't require very high temperatures. As for print setups, you have two options. You have recommended and custom. Now, if this is the first time you're using a 3D printer, you want to use recommended because if you click on custom, you'll be presented with a headache of options and you can actually increase that list even more. So for now, just not to get way ahead of ourselves, we're gonna click on recommend. Next up is the layer height. And the best way I can describe this is if you go here, it says solid view. If you go on layer view, it will give you a preview of what the 3D printer will actually see when printing or how it prints the model. As you can see here, it says 510. These are the number of layers on the print. And if I slide this bar down, you can see that it starts going down layer by layer. These represent the layers of the print itself. Now, each one of those layers, each time the print goes up one layer, that's 0.1 millimeters, and that's 100 microns, which is quite fine. The usual layer height that a lot of people use is 0.2 millimeters. It's kind of the draft quality kind of print, um, and it's, it's a compromise between faster speeds and still keeping a relative good amount of uh, quality on the print. To give you an idea, at 100 microns, this model will print in one hour and four minutes. However, if I increase it to 0.2 millimeters or 200 microns, it will re-slice it. And it says here it will print in 33 minutes. Now I need to point out that I, I take these numbers with a pinch of salt because I do know that at 200 microns, this thing will print in roughly about 50 minutes, one hour. So those aren't always that accurate. Next up is the infill percentage. Now this is all dependent on how strong you want the inside or the shell to be of the print. Now in this case, it's set to 10%. As you can see, this is what infill is. If we increase that, let's say we'll do it 30, it will re-slice the model and it will show you what the new infill looks like. And as you can see, it's much more dense. Obviously, it might not be needed for this particular model. Um, I, I don't think it needs more than 10%, to be honest. I think it can even print at 0%. However, this simply 
increases the strength or the integrity of the structure itself. So for now, we're going to do it at 10%. Another option is to click on this enable gradual infill here. And what it does is it calculates automatically which are the parts that require a bit more support and does this automatically. As you can see, the inside is pretty much empty. And the further down you go, the infill changes quite a bit. This is done all automatically by the Cora uh, engine. So it kind of calculates the most, well, let's call it the, the most perfected type of infill for that particular print. However, in this case, I don't need it because it might actually use more than it should. And in this case, I'm just going to disable it. Next up is generate support. Now on this print, it won't do absolutely anything at all. And the reason for that is generate support is meant to counteract parts which are at a very steep angle. Now, in this case, this is not such a steep angle. A 3D printer can handle about 45, 50% of um, steep angles relatively easy. If you go over 50%, you might need support with 3D printers. However, in this case, you really don't need it because there aren't really any steep angles. If there were, what would happen is the uh, Cura engine would simply create columns here. So when the print starts printing outwards, it doesn't print in midair. It would have some sort of support which will assist it in building up layers on top of them. Finally, there is build plate adhesion here. And this is pretty much, as you can see, there's like a huge kind of like carpet around the bottom of the print. That is build plate adhesion. That is called a brim. And the reason why that is there is that sometimes you have such a small footprint on the print itself, which might um, have difficulty sticking to the build plate. So you use a brim in order to increase the surface area of the print so it has better adhesion. However, in this case, seeing as PLA, it sticks easily to build plates and it's not that small of a footprint, we can actually remove it. And what will happen is that brim will disappear and instead we will have what's called a skirt. And these are three simple lines which pretty much prime the nozzle um, in order to start printing correctly straight away. So those are the standard settings for the recommended. Now, if you go on solid view back as it was before, you have these options over here. So if you click on the model, you have the options to move it. You can either move it by a set number of millimeters or else you can use these arrows here to move on the X axis, the Y axis or the Z axis. Don't worry if it's suspended in midair, just click on right and arrange all models and it will throw it on the center of the build plate. Next up is the scale and you can increase the size of this print. Um, if you leave it at uniform scaling, if you set the X at 150%, it will automatically increase everything else at 150%. Rotate simply rotates the model in any orientation that you wish. Finally, you have the mirror where you can click on one of these arrows and you can create a mirror of the object itself. So if I click on this arrow here, it will simply just turn around and create a mirror object. This comes handy not for symmetrical objects like this, but if you have sort of a left and a right of some kind of parts which are identical but require a mirror type of finish. Now, while that might seem a bit complicated to some, trust me, it's really not. I do highly recommend you download Quora and you start playing around a bit with the settings. Download a few models from Thingiverse or My Mini Factory or Pinshape. Start playing around to see what those variables will do to a model when you slice it. So that is it for today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. I also want to thank Profab3D and Polymaker for making this series possible. Please make sure you check them out in the video description below. As always, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. I would be more than happy to reply to them. Give this video a thumbs up. If you enjoyed this episode, please share, subscribe, and as always, Happy making, guys.